show me everything. 255 here, what up, what up? Today's video is about happy chaos and the five reasons I love this character and why we need more people like him. So without further ado, let's get into number one. All right, number one. Winning with happy chaos feels rewarding. Yes, he's been at the top of people's tires lists. Yes, he is arguably the best character in Guilty Gear as evidenced by the evil champ of 2022. However, no one will ever look at Happy Chaos as a character and say he's an Unga Bunga character. Anybody who has trained with this character knows how much practice goes into using him, and that for me is enough. Number two, labbing with Chaos is worth it. So yes, you put in the extra effort and time to learn this character, and you don't have to regret it. Many times in fighting games, a person can put a ton of time into learning a character they like and still still have tons of bad matchups in spite of having more skill than their opponents because the opponent picks a higher tier character. Happy Chaos's design does away with that. He requires skill to play with at high levels and win, and the person who fights as Chaos hardly has to deal with difficult matchups. In general, fighting game companies would do well to make more characters like that. One thing I dislike very much about fighting games is putting a great amount of time into a character just to watch that character lose because the character is low tire, especially if the character is technical and requires more work. This is not to say that characters that require a moderate level of skill or even an easy level of skill should be low tire, but it is to say that any characters that require higher levels of skill should never be low tire, or at the very least, they should not have a ton of matches where they lose by virtue of the character's design. And Happy Chaos is a great example of that. Great job, Arc System. Number three. All right, let's move away from character design and let's talk lore. Number three is lore. And what I'm referring to is not just the character specific part in Guilty Gear Strive, but the amount of time and energy given to the character's lore. In fighting games, you spend a lot of time with a character and nothing helps me love a character like identifying with their lore. And personally, many of my favorite characters are characters who are villains with great motives or passions that inspire them. Obviously, they are villains, so sometimes their motives are evil or make no sense, so they have the right idea, but they're going about it in the wrong way in any case. I think players who love characters, backstories, and motives have a much more enjoyable experience expressing themselves with that character during a fight. Almost like the characters embody and represent a little bit more than just the player's fighting style. Number four, a good original fighting style. Sometimes fighting styles may be original, but they are not the most appealing visually when it comes to being a fighting style. For me personally, a good example of that would be Angie. I just can't get behind the design of him fighting with fans. If it's another weapon, I apologize for my ignorance. They look like giant fans to me. It's not to say that it's bad or to say other people don't enjoy it, but the idea of using fans to beat somebody up, it sounds cool for about five minutes, but on the other hand, if you're talking about me going into training mode and labbing with the character for hours and losing and winning online rank matches or casual matches, this loses interest to in me. Versus somebody like Venom who uses a pull stick to beat characters behind. I can see somebody picking up a pull stick and popping somebody with it. And I could definitely see someone having fun with that, especially with his play style and those balls, time after time, thinking of setups that they can do and frame traps. But to each his own. Like characters with giant fans, that's fine. I like characters with pool sticks. Maybe you like both. I'm just saying that if you're gonna make an original fighting style, it needs to be appealing. And Happy Chaos is one of those characters who takes care of that. His design is stylish and his gun as a fighting character is unique. Not that a fighting game character using guns is unique, but the way that hey, Happy Chaos does it is unique. All right, 
And now it's time for our final number, number five. The fact that he's a DLC character. Now, I already know you think you should shut the video off. It's time to hit the dislike button. But here are my explanations. Number one, DLC characters are always a sign that developers are still working on the game. And when you love a game, that's something that you want. And number two, if developers are still working on the game, that means more balanced patches are coming and those tend to be a plus for everybody. Three, when fighting games first come out, many developers don't know how the meta is gonna shape up, and here's where this could be a problem. Imagine your character is in the base roster and he's low tire, and to add drunkenness to thirst, his design goes against the meta of the game. That character now loses all the time, and if that character is a popular character, there's then a lot of people who are gonna be dissatisfied with the game, even though they put in a lot of time. However, if a character is a DLC character and the meta has been shaking up, the developers can develop character in the way where it doesn't have to be overpowered and I personally think an overpowered character is always better than a lower tide character because it seems to be easier to nerf than buff up. With a character being lower tire, with a character coming in as a, as a DLC, that problem gets eliminated. Anyway, that's all. 